just went over to Heather's Power Equipment and picked up a, an HTA 135 pole saw. I've had a gas powered saw, pole saw, uh, for quite a number of years, but it's getting a little bit aged. I wanted to pick up something to to maybe start doing some video on and to get some things cleared up here around the, the house uh, with a battery powered unit. We've got a, a battery blower and a small, small battery trimmer and I thought I'd go with the battery powered on the pole saw so looking forward to that. I read over the operator's manual a lot of information on there. I've got the rapid charger and I've got that all set up. The battery is uh, is being charged and in full full capacity and I've got a 10 inch bar on here. I think I'm going to also uh, check it out and rig it up with a, a little other attachment you might find interesting. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. So I've got to get some uh, bar oil in the reservoir and, and get things checked out. I'll be back in a minute. Kind of official unboxing here. Got a plug you take out there for the battery. Controls here, hand slides forward. Have the switch there. A little bit of a, a slide mechanism here that you can take and, and be able to move the attachment point down, up and down for better, um, for better balance. That's cool. Got a total of 13 feet of reach, I believe, on this particular unit. So looking forward to being able to get most all of the the limbs that would cause trouble down the drive with the with the RV and stuff. It's got a bar on here with the 3 8 Pico chain, extended pitch 3 8 A little bit of a reservoir here for bar oil. And I've got some BC3 biodegradable oil I'm going to, to put in there. So we'll see how that works out and get everything adjusted up. I see the chain's a little bit loose here now. From a biodegradable standpoint, I've used the Better Than Oil. It's a plant-based oil, BC3, B3C, out of South Carolina. I've used it in a chainsaw. It works, works pretty well, so I'm going to start this pole saw off with it. Got a pretty good sized reservoir for the bar and chain oil. See how that kind of works out. We take a look here. The the cap assembly. Uh, there's a line that lines up over here on this side. It appears turn and kind of like the chainsaw caps twist over. Bar oil goes in there, and the other deal we have here is on the lock and unlock for the slide kind of unique it's got a little bit of an octagon or hexagon shape shaft so it kind of sits there have a handle grip and then that uh, slide assembly that moves up and down the shaft also have a little bit of a limb puller there Press that up and and see how she works always a good idea kind of put some gloves on messing with the bars and the chain same thing as with a, a chainsaw and looks like the standard bar wrench fits that. Have a, a vision hole here that you can kind of see as far as the, the chain around the sprocket and make sure it's clear. And they put captivated nuts like on the saw. That's good. Can't lose that. 3HP go. The bar is a. Um, 0 0.043, so 43 thousandths guide guide bar chain is the I guess you'd call it the narrow kerf lightweight on the Pico. So at 0 0.043, so and it's 10 inch 10 inch bar, but it is a 3005 bar pad, so that's the same as on on all of the the smaller saws, just the narrow kerf. Uh, Rollomatic Mini. So there is a sprocket tip on there, the standard bar. But I'm going to put a little, another little kit on here. I'll show you this. So I'm going to, I'm going to try this out. This is a, a little gadget that Oregon came out with several years ago. It's a Power Sharp, and more or less it has a, 
a special saw chain. It is a extended pitch 3 8 so it can be used the same uh, same bar pad dimensions and all that little steel bar has. But this is a sprocket nose also and 14 inch 50 gauge and the chain actually sharpens from the top. It's kind of kind of unique with that is, is that uh, when you mount this on there's then a, a clamp device that goes over there's a sharpening stone in here so you start off with the entire kit it goes on the unit as the chain gets dull then basically you can clamp this device on the end of the bar press on the end here that pushes that grinding stone up against the chain and this chain actually sharpens from the top down so it's kind of kind of unique it's also on the chain uh, one link or two links that's actually a diamond uh, dusted uh, dressing tooth and so that that keeps the stone in in proper shape and once the once your chain is is worn down then more or less you uh, just pick up a replacement chain and it comes with another another grinding stone so you just put that back in the clamp device and you're ready to go and I've done some playing with it I probably 15 16 sharpenings out of it at least working around the the farm here so it, uh, it works pretty good and I've had some of the disaster groups that have have used them but this gives me another four inches of reach here I'm gonna see how the how this electric battery powered unit kind of pulls that if not we'll have to have to go back to the 10 inch but I thought I'd give this a try so we're gonna mount this this up on it and that's the Oregon power sharp chains a little looped up always grab the loops and that helps to to be able to get it uh, untangled we want to make sure that the depth gauge is forward on top and there's a little a little tooth diagram on here that shows the, the rotation drop this onto the sprocket and then place it around then we can put the side cover back on back out correctly we'll see also the height of the tooth I've got to make sure we've got, got looks like it's gonna clear I think as long as I keep the chain tight we should be okay I have to use another cover Kind of interesting. I thought I'd just check it while it's new and see uh, see what the noise level is. It's it's turning about 94 or 95 decibels. You know, battery power units. People don't realize uh, from the standpoint of hearing protection, uh, you still have a lower noise level in some cases. But uh, when you when you really start to think about it, a lot of the noise with a chainsaw comes from the chain and bar and the sprocket assembly off of the power head and so you still have those two things happening and then plus an electric motor does have a, a little bit of a noise also but it may quiet down a little bit as I, I start to use it more but it's still not over but I would still probably use uh, hearing protection with it anything anything over 85 to 90 is definitely uh, warranted of, of hearing protection but it looks uh, looks pretty good there looks like it's gonna pull it pretty good can't wait to to get out there and try it it doesn't appear to have a a adjustment for the oiler it may be I'll, I'll have to recheck again on the manual but I'll have to um, to see here but I, I don't think there's there's anything on the oiler adjustment it's just a small a small unit as far as the bar goes so I don't think there's a, a real reason for it but it's oiling pretty good right now so we shouldn't have any any issues with it it's going to be a good one the steel hta 135 and i got the um, the ap 300 s battery which is a, a little bit higher higher uh, i guess you'd say uh, wattage it also I, I got the rapid 
charger. The other two units, the blower and the trimmer that I have, has the standard batteries and the standard standard charger with it. It doesn't take long. We alternate back and forth, pretty much work around the house here with it. But I thought on this, uh, I'd, I'd want something with a little bit more rapid charge, a little bit larger battery. They're also coming out, if they don't have it already, a 500 series battery. I plan to, as soon as they get here to the States, the MSA 300 uh, chainsaw. I'm going to be uh, probably purchasing one of those and I'll get the 500 battery with that and then uh, interchange between these units. So that's my, my plans at this point. So that brings up my, my battery powered arsenal as we, we start to, to look at equipment of the future, I guess you'd say. I cut three or four limbs there and uh, hot and humid out today in a helmet but very important when you're cutting stuff uh, above your head is to make sure that you have a, a little bit of protection there because limbs sometimes fall the wrong way I'm gonna try to put up a little series of some different videos having to do with pole saw with this new one and and so I hope you uh, come back and take a look at those on our YouTube channel and we will discuss quite a lot of cutting techniques when it comes to using a pole saw. But I think this, uh, this battery-powered HTA-135 is going to be a, a pretty powerful workhorse. So I'm uh, excited with that power sharp attachment. Take a little bit larger limbs. Didn't seem to pull it down at all. Spun it very, very well. The oiler is working good. It's not uh, hitting any of the housing. And so there's my, there's my kit for the pole saw. I guess it could be called the pole saw of the future. And it's quite, quite a unique piece of equipment. Steel HTA 135, 13 foot reach.